Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Anuja Kumar and with me is Rupinder Kaur Chawla with the Midday News. The headlines. Nation achieves historic feat of administering 2 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine within 18 months. WHO hails India for the milestone. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says he is proud of those who contributed in making India's vaccination drive unparalleled in scale and speed. Health Minister Mansukh Mandviya credits Prime Minister's successful COVID management for the landmark achievement. Government holds all party meeting to seek cooperation ahead of monsoon session of parliament beginning tomorrow. Polling for presidential election to be held tomorrow. 16th round of commander level talks between India and China underway at Chushul Moldo Point. Air Force Day parade this year to be held in Chandigarh says Indian Air Force chief. Prime Minister to address Naval Innovation and Indigenization Organization seminar Swavalamban in New Delhi tomorrow. In badminton PV Sindhu clinches maiden women singles title of Singapore Open defeating Wang Jiyi of China. Grandmaster R Pragyanand wins Parachin Open chess title in Serbia and in cricket India faces England in third and final ODI in Manchester this afternoon. And now the news in detail. India has crossed the landmark milestone of administering 2 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine within 18 months of launching the inoculation exercise in January last year. World Health Organization WHO has hailed India for administering over 2 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses. Talking to EIR News, WHO Regional Director for Southeast Asia, Dr. Poonam Khetripal Singh said, this is yet another evidence of the country's commitment and efforts to minimize the impact of the ongoing pandemic. 200 crore COVID-19 vaccine doses dene ke liye main Bharat ko badhai deti hu. Ye desh ki pratibadhata aur mahamari ke prabhav ko kam karne ke prayason ka ek aur saboot hai. COVID-19 tike gambhir bimari aur mrityu se suraksha pradan karte hain. In jeevan rakshak tikon ko सभी लोगों तक पहुंचाने के लिए हमें अपने प्रयास जारी रखने चाहिए हमें ये नहीं भूलना चाहिए कि कोविड 19 महामारी अभी खत्म नहीं हुई है वैक्सीन लेने के बाद भी हमें सभी एहतियात बरतने चाहिए प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी ऑल्सो कंग्रेचुलेटेड ऑल इंडियंस ऑन क्रॉसिंग द स्पेशल फिगर ऑफ टू हंड्रेड कोविड वैक्सीन डोजेस In a tweet Mr Modi said India has created history again. He said he is proud of those who contributed to making India's vaccination drive unparalleled in scale and speed. Mr Modi added that this has strengthened the global fight against COVID-19. Union Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr Mansukh Mandviya said emphasis on scientific research, manufacturing of COVID vaccines and setting up of a huge network for nationwide vaccination drive have played key role in the speedy administration of 200 crore COVID vaccine doses to the people. India started nationwide COVID vaccination drive from 16th January last year. and within the span of 18 months the country accomplished a significant milestone of administering 200 crore covid vaccine jabs to the eligible beneficiaries talking exclusively to all india radio news on the achievement dr mansukh mandviya said prime minister narendra modi's effective covid management is the main reason for the successful covid vaccination drive in the country main aisa manta hu ki india mein jo vaccination ki गति तेज रहे उसके पीछे मोदी जी का कोविड मैनेजमेंट कारण केवल कोविड टीका लगना या टीका लगा देना ये काम इतना सरल नहीं होता है तीन चीज पर काम करना होता है एक पब्लिक अवेयरनेस आज आप देखो डेवलप्ड कंट्री में भी वैक्सीन हेजिटेंसी है वो शत प्रतिशत टीका शत प्रतिशत के नजदीक भी नहीं पहुंच पाया डेवलप्ड कंट्री में भी सेवेंटी फर्स्ट डोज तक रुक गया दूसरा वैक्सीन का मैन्युफैक्चरिंग करना तीसरा केवल वैक्सीन लगाने से डेढ़ लाख इतना बड़ा देश शूज बी कंट्री शूज डाइवर्सिटी उसमें एक लाख पचास हजार जितने वैक्सीन सेंटर चालू करना पांच लाख जैसे जितने वैक्सीनेटर लोगों को ट्रेन करना और वैक्सीनेशन सेंटर तक 
वैक्सीन टाइम पे पहुंचाना क्योंकि एक सुचारू मैनेजमेंट उसके लिए बहुत आवश्यक होता है जो इंडिया में हुआ तब जाके हम सक्सेस रहे हाईलाइटिंग द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ हर घर दस्तक कैंपेन डॉक्टर मांडवीय सेड Continuous efforts have been made to accelerate the pace and coverage of COVID vaccination, which resulted in successful administration of second dose to 97% population. देश में 98% 18 एवं को first dose administer हो जाना, यानी कि एक बहुत successful प्रयास हुआ है. उसके बाद देश में COVID की रफ्तार कम हुई, तो second dose लगाने में थोड़ी लोगों में उत्साह कम दिखाई दिया. तो हमने हर घर दस तक टू लिया. और हर घर दस्तक टू के अंतर्गत हमारे वैक्सीनेटर लोग घर घर पहुंचे और सेकंड डोज लगाने के लिए लोगों को प्रोत्साहित किया ताकि हम 90 परसेंट सेकेंड डोज तक भी पहुंच गए Talking about the recent decision of the government to administer the free COVID precaution doses for the people above 18 years of age at government vaccination centers starting from 15th of this month till the next 75 days, the minister said this will help in boosting the immunity against COVID. The minister stressed that administration of COVID vaccine is essential for the immunization of children. Bachcho ko tika lagna ye bahut zaruri hai kyunki June mahine se naya session chalu ho chuka hai. Bachche school jaane lage hain. Aisi sthiti mein immunize ho ye bahut aavashyak hai. Aur isliye 12 se evo 12 to 15 to 18 sabhi bachcho ko टीका स्कूल में जाके हमारे वैक्सीनेटर स्कूल में जाते हैं बच्चों को लगाते हैं कैंप आयोजित करते हैं बच्चों को लगाते हैं और उसको अच्छा प्रतिशत मिल रहा है आज 82 परसेंट फर्स्ट डोज लग चुका है और पहले एवो को 80 परसेंट लग चुका है फर्स्ट डोज उसका टाइम पूरा होने से दूसरा डोज भी उसको अपने स्कूल में जाके कॉलेज में जाके Information and Broadcasting Minister Nurag Thakur said in a tweet that Indians have achieved the feat at a record pace while unleashing reforms and protecting livelihoods through the vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Niti Aayog member health Dr. V.K. Paul termed it a major achievement for the country. आज 200 करोड़ का एक माइलस्टोन देश ने पार किया है ये बहुत बड़ी उपलब्धि है इतने बड़े स्तर पर देश में वैक्सीन लगने और वो भी वो वैक्सीन जिसके लिए हम आत्मनिर्भर हैं इन वैक्सीन्स के द्वारा घर घर में सारा देश मिलके वैक्सीन्स को पहुंचाने में सक्षम हुआ है और आज जो 200 करोड़ का आंकड़ा जब पार किया जा रहा है तो हम कह सकते हैं कि कोविड की लड़ाई में पूरी तरह से जन भागीदारी रही है और हम अपने आप को इंश्योर कर रहे हैं कि ये वायरस हम पे प्रकोप ना करे हम इससे बचे रहें हमारी जान बचे हमारे स्कूल चलते रहें हमारी इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी चलती रहे और इस लड़ाई में अपना देश सबसे आगे खड़ा होकर इस वायरस को हराए Talking to AIR News, people from all walks of life lauded the government's efforts on achieving the remarkable milestone. I'm Javed Sheikh from Gujarat. It is very good achievement by India to reach a remarkable milestone of 2 billion COVID-19 vaccination doses. At this junction, I would like to congratulate each and every person who involved in this movement. The government is doing wonderful job to uplift healthcare facilities for the country and reach out to the rural population as well. It is really a pride moment for every citizen of the country and I would like to congratulate Health Ministry and Government of India for this remarkable journey. This is Amrit I am from Orissa. I want to congratulate Government of India and the Ministry of Health for achieving the remarkable milestone of 200 crore vaccination today. It's a very big milestone and I hope and I wish everyone take the vaccination on time. It's very effective. I have myself taken two vaccinations and a booster dose which helps me prevent my health from getting affected from corona. All party meeting called by the government ahead of monsoon session of parliament beginning tomorrow was held in New Delhi today. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi, Congress MPs Malik Arjun Kharge and Jairam Ramesh, TMC MP Sudhi Bandopadhyay, Rashtriya Lok Dal MP Jayant Chaudhary and DMK MP Thiruchi Siva attended the meeting, convened to seek cooperation from all political parties for smooth conduct of both the houses of parliament. 
राज्यसभा चेयरमैन एम वेंकैया नायडू हैज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड अ मीटिंग ऑफ फ्लोर लीडर्स ऑफ डिफरेंट पार्टीज इन द अपर हाउस येस्टरडे लोकसभा स्पीकर ओम बिरला चेयर एन ऑल पार्टी मीटिंग विद द फ्लोर लीडर्स ऑफ द वेरियस पार्टीज इन द लोअर हाउस ड्यूरिंग द मीटिंग द लीडर्स ऑफ पोलिटिकल पार्टीज अश्योर्ड द लोकसभा स्पीकर ऑफ द फुल कोऑपरेशन टू इन्श्योर स्मूथ कॉन्टैक्ट ऑफ द हाउस ड्यूरिंग द सेशन polling for the presidential election will also be held tomorrow our correspondent has filed this report the monsoon session of parliament which will begin tomorrow will continue till 12th of august there will be 18 sittings during the session this session is important given the fact that the presidential election and the vice presidential election will be held during this period the presidential election will be held on monday while the vice presidential election will be held on the 6th of next month price rise agnipat scheme and unemployment are some of the issues which are likely to be raised by the opposition during the monsoon session various bills including family court the amendment bill forest conservation amendment bill and press and registration of periodicals bill are likely to be taken up in the session with anand kumar suparna seika air news delhi the bjp has announced west bengal governor jagdeep dhankar as bjp and nda's vice presidential candidate the decision was taken during the bjp parliamentary board meeting in new delhi yesterday Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Home Minister Amit Shah, Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh, Party President JP Nadda and other senior leaders attended the meet. Meanwhile, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has announced that Janata Dal United will support NDA candidate Jagdeep Dhankar in the upcoming vice presidential election. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Nation achieves historic feat of administering 2 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine within 18 months. WHO hails India for the milestone. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says he is proud of those who contributed in making India's vaccination drive unparalleled in scale and speed. Health Minister Mansukh Mandviya credits Prime Minister's successful COVID management for the landmark achievement. Government holds all party meeting to seek cooperation ahead of monsoon session of parliament beginning tomorrow. Polling for presidential election to be held tomorrow. 16th round of commander level talks between India and China underway at Chushul Moldo point. Air Force Day parade this year to be held in Chandigarh says Indian Air Force chief. Prime Minister to address Naval Innovation and Indigenization Organization seminar Swava Lamban in New Delhi tomorrow. In badminton PV Sindhu clinches maiden women singles title of Singapore Open defeating Wang Jiyi of China. Grandmaster R Pragyanand wins Parachin Open chess title in Serbia and in cricket India face England in third and final ODI in Manchester this afternoon. For quick news updates round the clock follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. कॉम्पिटिशन की अगर आप कर रहे हैं तैयारी तो आकाशवाणी लाया है एक इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम अभ्यास एक ऐसा प्रोग्राम जहां आप पूछेंगे सवाल व्हाट्सएप नंबर नाइन टू एट या आप ईमेल भी कर सकते हैं अपने सवाल अभ्यास डॉट ए आई आर न्यूज एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम हमारे स्टूडियो में एक्सपर्ट आपके भेजे सवालों का देंगे जवाब शनिवार रात साढ़े बजे इस वर्ग का विषय है पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन आपके सवालों का हम करेंगे इंतजार 20 जुलाई तक आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास वेलकम बैक टू द मिड डे न्यूज ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो The 16th round of military talks between India and China began this morning. Army commanders of the two countries met on the Indian side of the line of actual control or LAC at Chushul Moldo meeting point. Our late correspondent reports that focus of today's talks is on disengagement along the LAC in eastern Ladakh. Lay based fire and fury general officer commanding Lieutenant General Anindya Singh Gupta is leading the Indian Army delegation while South Xinjiang military district chief Major General Yang Lin is leading the Chinese People's Liberation Army in the talks India has been pressing for quick disengagement of troops from all the remaining friction points besides seeking resolution of issues in Depsang and Demchok for restoration of peace and tranquility along the border in eastern Ladakh Indian Air Force Chief Air Chief Marshal V R Chaudhary has said Air Force Day parade this year will be held in Chandigarh. He said the Prime Minister's vision was to take major events out of Delhi. 
Speaking to a news agency today, the air chief said, keeping with PM's vision and Air Force's idea of showing IAF's prowess to the youth of the nation, it is decided to shift the venue of the parade to a new location every year. From 2006, Air Force Day on 8th of October was celebrated at the Hinden Air Base, which is in the adjoining district of Ghaziabad in Uttar Pradesh. Prior to that, the Palam Air Base was the choice for holding the Air Force Day celebration. The Air Chief said air activity across line of actual control is continuously monitored by the force. He said whenever there is a Chinese aircraft coming a little too close to LAC, then the force take appropriate measures by scrambling our fighters and putting systems on high alert. We integrated all these radars with our IACCS system. So we are able to monitor the air activity across the LAC while sitting in one of our IACCS nodes. We have also bolstered the SAGW capability along the borders. We have increased the mobile observation posts along the borders and we get a lot of inputs from the Army and other agencies who are also deployed there. So the movements and the air activity across the LSC is being continuously monitored by all of us. Whenever we find that the uh, Chinese aircraft or the RPAs are coming a little too close to the LSC, we take appropriate measures by scrambling our fighters or putting our systems on higher alert. IAF Chief Air Chief Marshal V. R. Chaudhary on Agnipath recruitment scheme said 7.5 lakh applications have been received. He highlighted this shows the keenness of the youth to join the armed forces. The Air Chief said the big challenge lies in finishing the selection process on time to start training in December. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address the Naval Innovation and Indigenization Organization and IIO seminar Swavalamban tomorrow at Dr. Ambedkar International Center in New Delhi. The key pillar of Atmanirbhar Bharat is attaining self-reliance in the defense sector. To further this endeavor during the program, Prime Minister will unveil sprint challenges which are aimed at giving a boost to usage of indigenous technology in the Indian Navy. In Madhya Pradesh, counting of votes is taking place for the first phase of urban body elections. In the first phase of election on 6th of this month, voting was held in 133 urban bodies of 44 districts. State Election Commissioner Basant Pratap Singh informed that the counting of votes is being held in 11 municipal corporations and 122 municipal councils today. The results of four main municipal corporations, Bhopal, Indore, Gwalior and Jabalpur will also be declared today. The 10th class examination result of Council for the Indian School Certificate Examinations, CISCE, will be declared at 5 this evening. The result will be uploaded on the website of the CISCE. In a press release, the CISCE said students will be able to view the result by logging on to CISCE.org. Result will also be available through SMS, for which detail has been posted on the websites. In Jammu and Kashmir, with the improvement in weather conditions, Sri Amar Ji Yatra resumed this morning from both Noonwan Base Camp Pahalgam and from Baltal route. The Yatra remained suspended yesterday because of the incessant rains along the two routes and around the Holy Cave Shrine. In Kerala, the month-long Ramayan Masam or Ramayan month begins today. It marks the beginning of the month of Karkidakam, the last month according to the Malayalam calendar. Considered a lean month, it coincides with heavy monsoon rains experienced in the state making people spiritually inclined. In Hindu households, shlokas from Ramayana are recited at dusk throughout the month. A strict light vegetarian diet is followed. Recitation of Ramayana is done in temples as well. The Ramayana month draws to a close on 16th of August. And now let's listen to a special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi ka safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day.
In today's episode, we remember Khasi freedom fighter Yu Tirod Singh Siam, who died on the 17th of July, 1835. Hailed for his warfare tactics, valor and uncompromised control over the Khasi region against British occupation, Yu Tirod Singh Siam was among the fiercest leaders of the Anglo-Khasi War that was fought from 1823 to 1833. His death anniversary is commemorated every year as a state holiday in Meghalaya. <laughs> Tirot Singh drew his lineage from the Siam Lee clan and declared war and fought against the British for attempts to take over control of the Khasi Hills. Initially, the British and Tirot Singh came to an agreement that is permission for the road project between Guwahati and Silhet in lieu of regaining possession of the passes into a Sam called Dwars. But the regional king Balram Singh disputed Tirot Singh's claim to the Dwars and went ahead with a party of armed men to establish his claim. When news came that the British were reinforcing forces in Assam, Tirot Singh convened a Darbar again and passed orders for the British to evacuate Nongkla. The British did not pay any heed and the Khasis attacked the British garrison in Nongkla. In the Anglo-Khasi war, the Khasis lacked firearms and had only swords, shields, bows and arrows. Therefore, they resorted to guerrilla activity, which dragged on for about four years. Tirot Singh was shot at by the British and had to hide in a cave. He was eventually captured by the British in January 1833 and deported to Dhaka. Yu Tirot Singh Siam died on the 17th of July 1835. All India Radio News salutes the brave son of the soil. We also remember freedom fighter Veer Hasaram Pamnani, who died on the 17th of July 1940. Born at Rohri on the 10th of April 1889 in Sindh, Pamnani resigned his government job during the non-cooperation movement in 1921 and joined the national movement. He was jailed multiple times for his participation in the freedom movement. In 1937, Pamnani was elected to the Sindh Legislative Assembly. When communal passions flared up in the area, Pamnani exposed the conspiracy behind the development in the Sindh Legislative Assembly. However, Veer Hasaram Pamnani was shot dead by the communists on 17th of July 1940 for foiling their attempt at starting a communal riot. AIR News salutes the great nationalist. <laughs> We also remember Gandhian freedom fighter Kishore Yesa, who died on the 17th of July 1930. A resident of Palghar, Maharashtra, Kishore was actively involved in the civil disobedience movement at Dharasana, Gujarat. He was injured in the police lati charge on the Satyagrahis. Instead of providing Kishore with first aid, the police arrested and detained him in the Arthur Road Jail. He was incarcerated in the jail for about 15 days and was shifted thereafter to JJ Hospital in a critical condition. Kishore Yesa succumbed to his injuries two days later on the 17th of July 1930. We salute this great Satyagrahi. <laughs> We also remember independence activist Guria, who took part in the first war of independence in 1857. Guria was caught by the British and put on trial for aiding and abetting the uprising against the British. He was sentenced to imprisonment for 14 years with hard labor in irons. 
He died in captivity on the 17th of July 1859 in the Andaman Islands. AIR News salutes the brave son of the soil. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. As a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, All India Radio News brings its listeners Amrit Mahotsav quiz, a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The next question of Amrit Mahotsav quiz will be shared with the listeners in the morning bulletin tomorrow. Celebrate India's Amrit Mahotsav by participating in the quiz. Ab har ghar ki chhat par shaan se pharega tiranga. गुनगुनाए जाएंगे नव विकास के गीत आन बान शान का प्रतीक राष्ट्र ध्वज तिरंगा आइए आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव के पावन अवसर पर इस स्वाधीनता दिवस हर घर फहराते हैं तिरंगा और लेते हैं भव्य और सशक्त भारत के निर्माण का संकल्प आइए हर घर फहराए तिरंगा On to sports in badminton ace indian shuttler pv sindhu has clinched her maiden women's singles title of singapore open the two time olympic medalist defeated wang jiyi of china 21 9 11 21 21 15 to claim her third title this year after registering wins in korea open and swiss open prime minister narendra modi has congratulated ace shuttler P.V. Sindhu on winning her first ever Singapore Open title. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said she has yet again demonstrated her exceptional sporting talent and achieved success. He said it is a proud moment for the country and will also give inspiration to upcoming players. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Thakur praised P.V. Sindhu's performance in the Singapore Open as stunning. In chess, young Indian grandmaster Pragyanand has won the Parachain Open A chess tournament 2022 in Serbia. The 16-year-old remained unbeaten and finished half a point ahead of the field. Second seeded Pragyanand scored 8 points from 9 rounds. Top seed Alexander Pridke took the second spot with 7.5 points ahead of Alisha Sulemanov and India's AL Muteya who both scored 7 points. Sulaimanov crapped the third place on the basis of a better tie break score. In cricket India will take on hosts England in the third and final one day international at Old Trafford in Manchester today as the series stands level at 1-1. The match will begin at 3:30 p.m. Indian time. Southwest Europe continues to battle summer heat wave that has triggered devastating forest fires. In Portugal, Spain and France, thousands of firefighters are busy dousing wildfires as the heat wave is showing no sign of easing. Portuguese authorities say at least 238 people have died from the heat over the past week in the country. Now let us take a look at the weather update for the day. National capital Delhi is likely to have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Mumbai is expected to have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Srinagar, Jammu and Muzaffarabad are likely to have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Leh and Gilgit are likely to have generally cloudy sky. Tiruvannanthapuram is expected to have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers in the northeast Guwahati, Itanagar, Imphal, Shillong, Aizawl, Kohima, Gangtok and Nagartala are likely to have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again. Nation achieves historic feat of administering 2 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine within 18 months. WHO hails India for the milestone. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says he is proud of those who contributed in making India's vaccination drive unparalleled in scale and speed. Health Minister Mansukh Mandviya credits Prime Minister's successful COVID management for the landmark achievement. Government holds all party meeting to seek cooperation ahead of monsoon session of parliament beginning tomorrow. Polling for presidential election to be held tomorrow. 16th round of commander level talks between India and China underway at Tushul Moldo point. Air Force Day parade this year to be held in Chandigarh says Indian Air Force chief Prime Minister to address Naval Innovation and Indigenization Organization seminar Swavalamban in New Delhi tomorrow In badminton PV Sindhu clinches maiden women's singles title of Singapore Open defeating Wang Jiyi of China Grandmaster R Pragyanand wins Parachain Open chess title in Serbia 
and in cricket, India faced England in third and final ODI in Manchester this afternoon. And with that, we end the midday news.